Um, my name is Lauren. I live here in Bend. I work for a local business and um, chose to move here to raise my family. Um, we're here to talk about the, um, the land use code changes. Um, last week, the Bend Planning Commission said that the City Council no longer wanted to review land use changes and also as part of their proposed code <coughs> amendments, you would entrust them to make changes to land use code, including zone changes going forward without your review. This seems dangerous and like an invitation to misuse and corruption. They use the words feeding frenzy when referring to how developers might respond. Uh, so we're just asking you, please don't accept these changes. The state does not mandate them. Other cities such as Portland are letting the state laws stand for themselves. Uh, and we just wanna protect Ben's parks and open spaces by rejecting these changes when you review them on November 20th. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Violet Davy. I live and go to school in Bend, Oregon, and I like to play with my dog and ride my bike in Bend's parks and wild spaces. I think it's important that we protect these spaces for future kids, pets, and families. Absolutely. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. I'm here in the service of my work with a loose coalition of citizens focused on preventing the proposed zoning change to historic Greenwood Cemetery. My concern regards the revisions to the, to the city planning code that were recently approved by the planning commission in which, among other things, the attempt was made to incorporate the tenants of Oregon Senate Bill 8. SB 8 forbids cities to prevent affordable housing being built in non-residential zones that meet certain criteria. In reading through that criteria, Greenwood Cemetery does not qualify because it is privately owned by a for-profit corporation. However, the wording that was used in the revision to the city planning code explicitly allows medium density housing in all public facility zones. This goes beyond the regulations established by the legislature and effectively pulls the rug out from under all the citizens who have been conscientiously laboring to follow the public participation protocols laid out by the city. The new wording in the planning code will allow the building of housing in the cemetery without public process or input. A second issue concerns the type of housing that SB 8 specifies. The legislature used the term affordable housing in reference to building in non-residential zones. This is defined as housing where the average rent or selling price is based on 60% of the local median income. However, in its planning code revision, the city has changed that language to income qualified housing. The difference is that income qualified housing could be redefined to fetch much higher rent and selling prices than affordable housing as defined by the legislature. When the planning commission voted to adopt the revised planning code, their decision was informed by the idea that these code changes were out of the city's hands. As far as I can tell, this appears to be largely true. However, as I've just pointed out, it does not appear to be entirely accurate. I would urge you to consider the path that Portland chose, which is to allow the state rules to stand on their own rather than to weave potentially misinterpreted or misrepresented tenants of SBA into our city planning code. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susie Newcomb. I'm a 31-year resident of Bend, and thank you for listening to these uh, items, the topics I know weren't you weren't ready to think about tonight, but we did feel like they were very important to address before they're brought up for the first reading of the law on November 20th. Um, so the updates include adding the words income qualified housing allowed outright within the public facilities zone. That is the zone and the only zone that protects our public parks, our schools, and our open spaces, our historic open spaces. Um, and we're being told that there's some kind of a mandate to make this change. And I've read these laws, and I encourage you, please do this, in Senate Bill 8 and the subsequent legislation, there is no mandate to change our local regulations in this way. Um, in fact, I called up State Representative Ken Helm. He had served as an independent hearings office officer for a type three zone change we had here a few years back around Troy Field. He recommended against it and we blocked that zone change on Troy Field successfully. And he said of, on all the housing work we've done over the past few years, the legislature is careful not to be as prescriptive as the city claims seems to be claiming. It would be politically not viable with the League of Oregon Cities to do so. So the legislature is not saying we have to change our laws. 
Um, as Tom mentioned, not all the public facilities lands meet the requirements of Senate Bill 8 or the other legislation. Some of these lands are privately owned and not by nonprofits. Some of these lands are constrained by land use regulations based upon statewide land use planning goals relating to natural resources, including air, water, land, or natural areas. So if they plunk this income housing allowed outright, it could put in jeopardy protected national natural areas, including those around Drake Park, Shovelin Park, you name it. Thank you so much for rejecting these word changes. I'm Bradley Garrick, been a Ben resident for three years. I'm just here to ask you to reject the Ben Planning Commission's proposed changes to add the words income qualified housing allowed outright to the Ben Development Planning Code and Comprehensive Plan, as well as changes to the Type 3 quasi judicial review process. These changes are not mandated by Senate Bill 8 or the subsequent legislation regarding affordable housing. There is no place in any of the legislation that says that cities must update their laws to add these words. Other cities, such as Portland, have chosen to let the legislation speak for itself and to not change their local laws. Beyond this, the proposed language does not align with state legislation. Um, the proposed cha changes from Ben Planning have crossed out the word affordable and replaced it with income qualified. Currently, the definition for income qualified aligns with state definitions, but this could be changed easily without your reviews as city council and without the public's right to appeal to you, which could make it more lucrative for developers to build on public bend parks, schools, and historic open spaces. As it was pointed out in last week's planning commission meeting, Ben does not have an excess of public land. Currently, there are 24,073 acres in the city of Bend, and only 7% or 1,711 are designated with the public facility zone. This is down from 3,500 acres designated in, seven, or in 1995. Please reject this language so that future generations can enjoy these spaces. My name is Diana Brown, and I live here for 26 years. The Bend Planning Commission has proposed that many of our cherished open spaces, such as Greenwood Cemetery, which contribute to the character of Bend, Oregon, be paved over, altered, and changed forever without right of public appeal. Furthermore, it is neither mandated nor prudent to add the language income qualified housing allowed outright to the public facilities zoning district. Public facilities land is not necessary to meet our housing needs. Bend will, at the current rate of building, exceed the 2028 goals by 2026, even accounting for increases of population growth. Recent, recent changes to the Bend Development Code are not legally mandated, they are unnecessary for developers, they reduce staff discretion, they make it easier to rezone land, they may not yield affordable housing. This makes, th this matters because the, the Bend Public Facilities Zone has protected Bend's parks, schools, and open spaces in alignment with Oregon Goal 5 for preserving natural resources and Goal 1 for citizen involvement in the change process. Members of Bend City Council reject the changes to the Bend Development Plan and Comprehensive Plan, preserve Bend's valued open spaces, and transparent community-centered decision-making. Thank you. Um, I'm a Bend resident, uh, born and raised. I'm putting forth testimony to inform you that the community is becoming more aware that the City Council may potentially jeopardize some of our public parks and turn them into housing projects. As a community, we are uniting and having lawyers weigh in on this matter. It is unacceptable to misportray and shift responsibility onto the state of Oregon when this is directly coming from the city of Ben. To date, the community's reaction is that they are angry and concerned. Our community parks are to be protected and preserved. The community's request is to is not to vote in the planning commission recommendations from October 28th. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. 